Welcome to PBS 39 Scholastic Scrimmage. Scholastic Scrimmage is brought to you by the members of PBS 39 and by... Scholastic Scrimmage is sponsored by St. Luke's University Health Network, the region's leading provider of medical education. For more than 100 years, St. Luke's has been dedicated to educating physicians, nurses, and healthcare professionals. To learn more, call St. Luke's InfoLink, toll free at 866-ST-LUKES, or visit sluhn.org. Support for PBS 39's educational programming is provided by the Deluxe Corporation Foundation. Proud to support quality programming on PBS 39. And now your host, Dr. Karen Walton, Provost to Sales University. Welcome to Scholastic Scrimmage. It's the 42nd year that PBS 39 has brought you this academic competition. I'm Karen Walton and I'm delighted to be your host. From now until June, the best and brightest students from 31 schools will compete for the honor of being the Scholastic Scrimmage champions. At the end of the season, the two final teams will win scholarships for their schools from the Air Products Foundation. Let's meet the team from William Allen High School. My name is Ethan Christensen and I am a senior. My name is William Shelfate and I'm a senior. My name is Nathaniel Stewart and I'm a senior at William Allen High School. My name is Kira Butts and I'm a senior. William Allen's coach is Todd Smith. <laughs> and now the team from Bangor High School. I'm Emma Wartman and I'm a senior. My name is Bethany Schwartz and I'm a senior. My name is Madison Collins and I'm a junior. My name is Vanessa Berge and I'm a senior. Bangor's coach is Kara Derry. <laughs> the judges for today's contest are Sally Campbell, retired English teacher, and Dr. Gary DeLeo, professor of physics at Lehigh University. Remember that the questions on scholastics from each demand rapid recall of factual information and are not necessarily indicative of academic training. We understand the rules, so let's begin the contest with the toss-up in geometry. What geometrical constructions would you perform to find the point that is equidistant from the three vertices of a triangle. You would draw the perpendicular bisectors to each side and the point of intersection of those would be the equidistant from the three vertices of the triangle. Next toss-up is in U.S. history. Name three of the four U.S. presidents that have memorials in Washington, D.C. William Allen. Lincoln, Washington, Jefferson. He is correct. The one that you did not have was FDR, but you have the three of the four. And your bonus. The first U.S. presidential library was started by which president at his home in Hyde Park, New York? Franklin Roosevelt. It was FDR. Toss up in American literature. Concord, Massachusetts was home to the Alcott's father and daughter, Nathaniel Hawthorne. And these two best known transcendentalists, name them. William Allen? Uh, Throw and Walden. Over to Bangor. Throw and Emerson. As you know, Walden is Thoreau's <laughs> work. Yes, uh, nice try though, nice try. Uh, physics. Two three significant digits give the speed of light in meters per second. It is 300 million meters per second. 
Next toss-up is in geometry. An isosceles right triangle has legs of length five times the square root of two. How long is the third side? William Allen? 10. Correct, you used the Pythagorean theorem on that one, good for you, and your bonus. The medians of every triangle are concurrent. Their point of current concurrency is what fraction of the way along each median from the vertex to the opposite side? Nathaniel? One half. Two thirds. Doesn't hurt to try on a bonus. Toss up in language arts. Multiple choice. If you were caught in a maelstrom, are you caught in one, a flood, two, whirlpool, three, labyrinth, or four, tsunami? Anger? Uh, two. Ruby. Two, whirlpool. And I should have pronounced that maelstrom. And your bonus. Homonyms frequently give students difficulty. Fill in the blanks with the proper forms of complement, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T, and complement, C-O-M-P-L-I-M-E-N-T, in the sentence on the monitor. No partial credit given. Bethany, the first one is an I or an E? E. The second one? I. Incorrect. It's the other way around. A compliment with an E means to complete, whereas with an I means to say something favorable about it. Next toss up in geometry. One of the five recognized breeds of retrievers, of them, which one was named after a large Bay in eastern United States. William Allen? A uh, Labrador Retriever. Bangor? Chesapeake. Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And now your bonus. Of the five recognized breeds of retrievers, which one is named after a large peninsula in northeastern Canada? You gave it away, yes, uh huh. Labrador, you are correct, but uh, Bangor does not get the points. Good for you, though. Toss up in chemistry, multiple choice. Which of the following materials is composed of long molecules formed by the linking of smaller repeating units? Is it acids, bases, alkalis, or polymers? Banger. Alkalis. Over to William Allen. Nathaniel. Polymers. Is correct. And your bonus. Multiple choice. Which of these is not a polymer? Is it concrete, hair, or silk? Silk. Concrete. Next toss up is in physics. Newton's second law of motion says that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to its what? William Allen? Mass. Correct, Nathaniel, and your bonus. Paper and pencil. If a two kilogram mass accelerates at eight meters per second on a frictionless surface. How many newtons of horizontal force have been applied to it? Six, 
Nathaniel? 16. Newton's is correct. Toss up in chemistry. Name the metallic element whose harmful compounds are found in old oil-based paint. Banger? Lead. Is correct. And name the slow-melting metallic alloy used to join wire and metallic pipes. Bethany? Copper. It is solder. Toss up in U.S. Geography. To see the stark beauty of the stratified rock formations that surround Lake Powell, you can travel to what two states? We Allen? Colorado, Utah. Over to Bangor. Close, Utah and Arizona. Toss up in world history. The development of Byzantine painting and sculpture was disrupted after the age of the Emperor Justinian, by which controversy that began in 1726 with an imperial edict prohibiting religious images and lasted until 843. William Allen? Iconoclast. Iconoclastic controversy is correct, and your bonus. For five points each, identify the following during the period of iconoclastic controversy. A, the emperor who banned the worship of religious images in 726. Nathaniel? Justinian. It was Leo III, and the next one, the Pope who in 1800 crowned the King of the Franks as Emperor of the Romans. Nathaniel? Urban? Pope Leo III. <laughs> Toss up in chemistry. Which chemical element sublimes? That is, changes from a solid directly to a gas at about 3,500 degrees centigrade. This element's atomic number is six. William Allen? Carbon. Yes. Bonus. How many electrons does a carbon atom have in its valence shell? Nathaniel? Six. Four. Toss up in mathematics. For what real numbers x is it true that the, the quantity x minus 17 squared is equal to the quantity 17 minus x squared, as seen on the monitor? For what real numbers? William Allen? 17, 0. Over to Bangor. Bethany? All real numbers? Yes. It's just like A and opposite of A. A squared is the same as opposite of A squared. And your bonus, Bangor. Explain why f of x is equal to the absolute value of x is not a one-to-one -one function. Bethany? Could, oh, because it could be either the negative version or the positive version of either one. And what about the negative and positive version of either one? Because the absolute can't be negative. 
I cannot accept that answer. It's because if you take the, a number and it's opposite in the domain, you get the same number in the range. For example, f of 2 is the same as f of negative 2. And you might talk about the horizontal line test to answer that question. Next toss-up is in music. Pictured on the monitor is a famous romantic period composer who, for the most part, concentrated on one instrument. Although he was an ardent Polish patriot, in France he used the French versions of his name and he eventually became a French citizen. Who was he? Chopin. It is halftime. The halftime score is William Allen 55, Banger 25. In the first round, we asked the students to tell us something about a hero they might have or someone whom they admire or a mentor. So let's begin with William Allen. Ethan? Uh, I would say that I admire greatly Han Solo from uh, Star Wars because he proved, among other uh, not noble heroes, because he embodies that anyone can be a hero. Are you looking forward to the next? I am, greatly. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. William? Uh, I look up to Obi-Wan Kenobi for showing that there's always more that you can learn and you can always find the good in any situation. So you two are looking forward yes, to it. Yes, very excited. Absolutely. And Nathaniel? Um, I've never seen Star Wars, so I can't really say a Star Wars character that I look yes, up to. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I do look up to um, my pastoral staff at my church because they support me a lot and help me and mentor me, as well as my Bible quiz coach because he's always on my back and yelling at me and telling me to, to keep up the good work, I guess. Might I say I'm on your side? <laughs> <laughs> I will say something that is not politically correct. I am not a great Star Wars fan, but do not, do not. Okay. <laughs> I, I have some other redeeming <laughs> factors, I hope. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, I, I have to go with them and say I look up to Yoda. Um, okay, all right, all because, right, um, all right, he, okay. He showed me that I don't have to be um, tall or strong or powerful to be very wise. Well, it's wonderful that you have uh, you've identified some characteristics of those characters. <laughs> Whatever, that's the, that's the good side. Okay, let's go over to Banger and see what uh, Star Wars does with him, okay? I don't particularly like Star Wars. Oh, so. yes, yes, yes. Okay, Emma. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to say my culinary arts instructor at CIT, he's pushed me a lot to become a better cook and has uh, given me the dream of going to the CIA and becoming a world-renowned chef. Thank you. Bethany. Um, I'm same with her about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would say uh, I admire my French teachers, uh, Madame Carver and Madame Martinez. They've helped me find my passion, which is French. Thank you. Madison. Uh, I do love Star Wars, but I'm not to go with Harry S. Truman, because I think he was a great man and an even better president, and he furthered the spread of democracy. Uh -huh. Thank you. And Vanessa? Um, I would say my band director, Mr. Hahn, for giving me more, oppor more opportunities in music and just advancing my talents. And what instrument do you play? I play bass clarinet and sousaphone. Thank you. Let's continue with the toss-up in world literature. What Greek dramatist wrote the play in which Antigone is the main character? William Allen? Sophocles. Bonus. What was the curse on Oedipus? Yes. He's blind? No, he ignorant, ing ignorantly, without knowing that is, he killed his father and married his mother. He oh. did not know he was blind. Oh, that's the curse. Okay. Oh, Next toss up is in U.S. geography. Name the first national park in the U.S. It has territory in three states Montana, William Allen, uh, Yellowstone. Is correct. And your bonus for five points each locate these national parks by state. First, Hot Springs. Uh, Nathaniel? Arkansas. Second, Mesa Verde. Nathaniel. New Mexico. Colorado. So you did get five points. Next toss up is in world history. Which two word term, two word term, did Greek poet Homer use to describe a past period that he thought was more enlightened and civilized than the time in which he lived? Historians generally use this term to describe a country's time of greatest achievement. Especially William Allen. Golden Age. Yes, and for five points, identify the following concerning golden ages in history. The leader of Athens from 461 to 429 BC. And do you guys know any leaders of Athens? Should I just say something really stupid? Oh. 
Nathaniel. Uh, Barack Obama, because I have no idea. I think I think you're a little, <laughs> a little off, just a little, a little, little. Pericles, just a little off. Okay, next, the ruler of England from 1558 to 1601, 1603. Nathaniel. Elizabeth I. Yes, you got five points. Toss up in mathematics. Paper and pencil. A soccer team played 36 games and lost six. Assuming no game ended in a tie, what percentage of its games did the soccer team win? And round off your answer to the closest whole percent. William Allen. 83%. Correct. Bonus. What fraction of a gallon is two quarts, three pints? Nathaniel? 65%. It is 7 eighths. Oh, what fraction? It is 7 eighths, but it's not the correct percent either. Next toss up is in mathematics. What are the first three terms of the infinite series represented by the expression on the monitor? The first three terms. Sigma goes from 1 to infinity of 3 over 10. William Allen? 3 over 10, 3 over 100, 3 over 1,000. Correct. And your bonus. What is the sum of the infinite series shown on the monitor? Calculus. Oh, it's calculus. We'll say one. It is one third, or 0.3333 repetend. Okay. Next toss-up is a video concerning Pennsylvania history. What local college began as a seminary for girls in 1742? It was the first school for girls in the nation. William um, Allen. Moravian College. Correct. And your bonus. Name the Moravian bishop and pioneer educator who, called the, who is called the father of modern education. He wrote that all boys and girls should be sent to school. Horseman. Horseman. It is Comenius, and there is a large statue of Comenius on the Moravian campus. Next toss up is geometry. The figure on the monitor is composed of five congruent squares. If the area of the figure is 125 square inches, find the perimeter of the figure. William Allen? 60 inches. Correct. Bonus. The area of each circle in a rectangle on the monitor is 9 pi square inches. What is the area of the rectangle? Nathaniel? Nathaniel must answer. 9 pi? 72 square inches. So you did not get that correct. Next toss-up is in British literature. In which Dickens novel do these characters appear? Uriah Heep, Mr. Wickfield, and Betsy Trotwood. William Allen. Great expectations. Anger. David Copperfield. Biology. What is the largest part of the brain? It is associated with higher brain functions such as thought and action. We Allen. Cerebrum. Bonus. Which part of the brain regulates body temperature, blood pressure, heartbeat, and blood sugar levels?
Nathaniel, it is hypothalamus. You were looking for the whole way down the line. Nobody wants to stick his or her head out. A toss up in US geography. Name the scale that is used to assign a single number to the quantity of energy released during an earthquake. Banger. Richter. Yes, the Richter scale. What is the most earthquake prone state in the contiguous United States? California. Bethany. California. Yes. Toss up in mathematics. This is not a toss-up in mathematics, excuse me, it's in the social sciences. If you're studying about a people's physical characteristics, geographical location, environmental relations, social relations, and culture, you would be studying which social science? William Allen? Um, sociology. It will go over to Bangor. Can you repeat the question? I cannot repeat the question. It is anthropology. Excuse me, I, there's just a rule after I've read the whole question. I didn't, I didn't mean to be rude. I, I cannot repeat it. But they were, it's a good try. Toss up in biology. What type of reaction results when one substance gains electrons while another substance loses electrons? It's a redox, oxidation reduction. Toss up in current events. A hospital in Kunduz, K-U-N-D-U-Z, Afghanistan, was destroyed on October 3rd, 2015, in an U.S. airstrike. What organization operated the hospital? William Allen. Red Cross. Banger. Bethany? Uh, Doctors Without Borders. Yes. And your bonus. In 1999, Doctors Without Borders was awarded what prestigious prize? You may, you may. Uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. You are correct. Congratulations for that. The final score is Banger, 60, and William Allen, 130. Our thanks to Bangor High School for participating. Congratulations to William Allen High School. We'll see you in round two later in the season. Thank you for watching and supporting these excellent students. Please join us next week for another contest on Scholastic Scrimmage. Scholastic Scrimmage is brought to you by the members of PBS 39 and by... Support for PBS 39's educational programming is provided by the Deluxe Corporation Foundation. Proud to support quality programming on PBS 39.